Welcome back to module five, where we're talking about weekly emails. Here in lesson two, we're talking about the two types of weekly emails so that you'll know exactly what to send and what to include in your, your weekly emails. So in this lesson, specifically what you'll learn is the two types of weekly emails, what content creators should include in their weekly emails, and then how to write a weekly email if you aren't yet creating content. So that's what we're gonna cover, let's dive in. Look, the two types come down to the simple question. Are you creating weekly content week in and week out? If you're creating regular long form content every week, you're gonna send one kind of email. If you're not, you're gonna to have to tweak that slightly and include a little bit more in your weekly emails. Now, before I dive in here though, I wanna make a point. When I talk about producing weekly content and I refer to content creators here, I'm talking about long form content, a blog, a podcast, a video show, anything of that nature, even a Facebook live show if it's kind of a long form show. What I'm not talking about is standard run of the mill social media content. Now that stuff's important, but that is not long form content. So if the only content you're putting out on a regular basis are posts on uh, social, media, um, social media platforms, you need to consider yourself a non-content creator and follow that route. If you have a podcast, a blog, a video show, a Facebook live show that is kind of long form, then you are a content creator. So with that distinction, let's dive in to the actual emails themselves. And we'll start with the emails that content creators should produce because this is pretty straightforward. We've talked about it before. For content creators, the weekly email format follows the simple three-step framework for story emails. This is in the resources section and we've covered it before, but the email structure is this, hook, story, call to action. And the bulk of your email will be your story. So again, the hook is just to get their attention, to get them to, the, to read. The story is how you build the know and like factor. It's how you build those connections. So if you think about it, you can understand since the purpose of the email is to build connection, the story is the most important part. And then you have a call to action because we always want to give subscribers something to do with our emails. So that is the simple structure. Now, the structure stories and hooks are covered in the story-based email lesson and in the next lesson, we go deeper on picking the right stories and then kind of picking out the right hooks for your weekly emails. So here, what we're focused on is the call to action section. What are you going to ask them to do? Well, in your weekly emails, your call to action is to go check out your weekly content. You can see why this only works for content creators, right? You have to have weekly content that you're sending people to. I wanna stress something here. We are not talking about an in-depth summary. We are not talking about a Cliff's Note version. We are talking about call to action that invites them to go check out your weekly content. And there's kind of two ways you can do this. One is you might be inviting subscribers to go check out existing content, or two, you might be inviting them to join you live while you create the content. Now, if you have a standard blog or podcast, you're gonna use the first variety because you will publish the blog, publish the podcast, then send your weekly email driving traffic to that content. If you have a live video show, like a Facebook live show, you're gonna generally want to send your weekly email the morning of the Facebook live show and invite them to come join you for that show. So you can kind of see the difference. It's have you already created the content or not? Now, I wanna show you some examples and give you some framework so you see what this looks like in kind of real life. And, and these are examples of, th of things I've sent. So here's an example of uh, the call to action section for an email where I was saying, go check out my existing content, an existing podcast that had come out that day. I start with in today's episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast, and obviously that's a link, I give you that kick in the ass to get your ass back to selling if that was in the cards already. Now, before this, the story has already talked about this notion that people were afraid to sell. 
and during the pandemic and why that's a mistake. I've already kind of talked about that a little bit with the story, um, not a lot, but a little bit. And so there's a natural transition. Then what you'll see is there's three short paragraphs, a sentence each, that kind of digs into the topic we will be talking about or that I talk about on the podcast and gives them a little bit of um, kind of a, a sense of what they'll be getting. Not a ton. It's not a bunch of things, you know, a bunch of information. It's not like I even say, here are the five things that I cover. No, because again, it's not a summary. Then I go with a final call to action again that is more direct. So go grab your cup of coffee or pint of beer and check out episode 152 of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. So this is the entire call to action section in this email. And this is a pretty standard structure that I use in just about every single weekly email I send inviting people to check out an existing podcast. The only question is, are there two or three paragraphs between the two calls to action? And when there's two paragraphs, it tends to be, you know, one paragraph is slightly longer than this or you're going to have these three very short paragraphs. So that's the standard that I use. Now, let's talk about what the structure is. You have an introductory sentence with an embedded link to the content. In other words, by embedded link here, I mean you're not literally saying click here to go check out or go check out. You're not telling them what to do. You simply link the title of your blog, of your podcast or whatever, where you say in this week. So if you were a blog post, blogger, you'd say in this week's post on my blog and post on my blog would be a link going directly to that post. So that's what I mean by an embedded link. It's a sm slightly softer invite, but people know blue underline means it's a link. So you do that. Then you have a few sentences highlighting the content. And then you have a conclusory sentence with a specific invite to check out the, the content. Again, mine, I basically say, go check out episode 152. Now, you could be even more explicit and say, click here to go check out if you wanted to. But the point is that that is a more you know direct and specific call to action. But use this structure week in and week out for your call to action and you'll be in good shape. Now, something I want to point out for this form of call to action. Now, you obviously want people to check out your content, but your email, the primary goal remains to build the connection. That's why we're not going to stress out too much about whether people are clicking on this. And the reality is that most people who are your kind of avid followers who want to view your content are going to be doing that. Now, bloggers, maybe it's slightly different most of your traffic will likely come from someone clicking on that link or seeing a post on social or something else. But for podcasters, for people who have a YouTube channel, for anything like that, at some point people are subscribed and they're not clicking links and emails. So your goal is largely, hey, let's continue to build connection here. That's what we're trying to do with our emails. So that's for existing content. Now let's look at a kind of a structure if you are inviting them to join you for live content. You basically tell them you're going to go live and, you know, have a more specific call to action. So, uh, and, and this was an example from the first time I had my live. Uh, so we didn't have yet. It wasn't quite set up yet, scheduled in advance where they could just go to the directly to the specific post. Um, but you have a statement saying, hey, I'm going to be going live on my pod or on my Facebook page. Click here at noon to join me. So again, you have a link that's doing it. And you give them something here. You'll see, and during the live pass podcast, we'll drop a link where you can grab a badass guide that includes a funnel map, explanation of how to run the launch, and copies of the emails I sent. And what I'm doing here is I'm really giving them a reason to join me. And then again, I have... Um, a, a follow up call to action, a direct click here. Uh, and in this case, I was saying to follow my page. So you get notices when I go live. Now we've modified that it says click here, you know, to join me on uh, the live because we will always pre schedule these. So people have the option to click, uh, get a reminder for the specific post when I'm going to go live. But that's the standard structure that I'm using now for my live invites. Let's kind of talk through the structure. It's pretty similar. Introductory invite to join you for the upcoming content creation. Then a few sentences highlighting the value they'll receive from jo by joining you. And then a conclusory sentence with a specific invite to join. 
So again, it's similar in structure. The difference is kind of what's in the middle because you can't highlight what's already been creating. You're gonna highlight what they will get out of joining you. And in this case, when you're inviting them to join you live, and I don't wanna say that them joining you live is the only thing that matters, but you really do want to get them to join you. Like your goal is actually to get the click. And so because of that, I would stress that in this context, you may want to spend a little more time thinking through and making that middle part a little bit more meaty. And I don't mean, by meaty, I don't mean longer. I simply mean more curiosity inducing, more likely to really make them say, well, I've got to be there for that. So that is just a thought because again, for an invite to a live, yes, you're still trying to build connection, but you really do want them to join you live because if you have a live Facebook show, for example, it's always better if people are there live to see it. So that's the, the two different structures of emails if you're a content creator. Now let's talk about what you should be doing. Like, what do you say if you're not creating content, right? Because you can't use those calls to action that we've been talking about. So you might be sitting there saying, well, that's great, Bobby, but how in the world am I going to send an email because I'm not yet creating content? Well, we'll talk about that. But first I want to talk about something. If you're not creating content on a regular basis, your weekly emails are actually more important because they actually have to carry more water. So again, for content creators, we've talked about this over and over again, that your weekly emails are really about building the know and like factor. The trust factor is done by your content. Well, if you think about it, if you're not creating content, you have the, don't have that content out there. So your emails need to build the know, like, and, and trust factors because the content isn't there to build the authority for you. So that means adding a fourth element to your weekly emails. So here's the email structure that you should use if you're not creating content yet. Hook, story, that's the same. Then you need to add a tip or lesson to build authority and then a call to action. And your call to action will be slightly different, obviously, because you're not inviting them to your content. The hook and the story, same general concept, they need to tie into the tip or lesson instead of tying into your content. And then the call to action will be slightly different. So again, I wanna focus on the tip or lesson and the call to action here in this lesson. So the tip or lesson is about providing value to your subscribers to demonstrate that you are a trusted source. Think of it as a mini blog post. Think about it as you are providing that tidbit of knowledge, of information, whether it's how-to, inspiration, whatever you would cover in a weekly content or piece of content you need to have in your email. So yes, you don't have to write an entire separate blog post, but you got to still provide that kind of value so that people are starting to see you as someone who is a trusted authority within your niche. So that's the tip or lesson. Again, if, it, if I didn't have my podcast, I would be adding a tip or a lesson that would talk about things like why you need to be sending email, why you need to be creating content, how to make content creation easy, how to avoid the overwhelm of thinking you have to do all the things, what to focus on in your business. All the kinds of things I talk about on my podcast, I would have to provide a tip or lesson to help people get that same kind of value directly from my email rather than from my content. So that's what you have to do. So again, if you are not creating content, you know, the good news is that email marketing can kind of, you know, take the place and help you fill that gap. The bad news is it means your email, your weekly emails, you're going to have to spend more time writing them than a content creator because you have to put in the thought to provide the kind of value that content creators are providing elsewhere. So that's the tip or lesson. Again, you don't want to make that into a, a standalone 500 word lesson. You don't want to do that. You're going to need to make it short, sweet, succinct, and to the point. It's probably going to be one tip or one quick lesson per email. 
then the call to action. Because you don't have content to send them to, that can't be the call to action. Now, you have pretty much limitless options. It could be asking them to do something for themselves. So to be clear, a call to action could be as simple as saying, take this one tip that I've given you and put it into action by doing X in your life, your business, whatever it is. So it could be that direct. You could ask them to respond, for example, to say, you know, tell me how, you know, you've implemented this like in your life. Tell me how this has affected you. You could do that. You could ask them to follow you on social. You could ask them to do anything and everything, but you always need to be asking them to do something. So I want you to be thinking about that constantly. And, and, and here's kind of the note here. What you ask subscribers to do doesn't really matter too much. You just have to get them trained to take action when they get your emails. And the reason why we're doing that is that when we get to the point of promoting, our emails will not be something that we simply want our subscribers to read and do nothing on. We want them to take some action. So we want to train them to expect us to ask them to take action. And we do that by asking for an action in every email we send them on our weekly emails. So that's the point I want you to get here. Just come up with how would it best serve you and your audience? What call to action? What action could they take to serve themselves, to serve your business interest, et cetera, and ask them to take that action? So that's how you pick your call to action. So now here's a key lesson takeaway. Content creators should focus exclusively on connections, on kind of building the connection with them, their audience. Non-content creators should add a tip, trick, or lesson to also build authority in addition to connecting with their audience. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about how to write a good story. So we're going to talk about the elements of a good story for your weekly email, how to identify and organize good stories for your weekly emails, and how to identify the hook for your stories. So I'll see you in the next lesson.